Welcome back to the Astrology Report, this time for August 14th through the 21st of 2023. My name is Cam White, if you guys don't know me already. Actually, I lied. August 14th through August 20th, not the 21st. I had that messed up. Uh, thank you guys so much for being here. Make sure you like this video if you like the content. Make sure you subscribe so you never miss out on any updates on what is going on in space weather. Just a reminder, we are still having the picnic slash potluck on September 3rd, Sunday. I believe we're going to have it start at about 12 p.m. It's going to be at Observatory Park in here in Denver. Last year, we had about 40 to 50 people come and go. Uh, there's probably about a group of 30 that just stayed the whole time. So if you are going to bring some food, you don't need to be bringing anything for 100 people. But just bring, you know, something for yourselves, or maybe a few other people. We don't want to have a huge, huge excess of stuff. So anyway, make sure you're there. I'm really excited to see all you guys there. It was a lot of fun last year. All we did was just hang out in the park because astrology things are always like centered around conferences or lectures and there's nothing just like a like there's just nothing to chill and hang out to so this is why I, I wanted to do this was just kind of like let's just all get together as people that are into astrology and you know talk about it or talk about other things you know meet people that are other that are also into astrology so make sure you're there again observatory park september 3rd probably about 12 p.m um and there's gonna be some food and some drinks so i'll see you guys there so we're starting this week off. Um, this week isn't all that crazy, um, which is probably kind of nice. Like we ended last week with the Venus Kazemi. The only thing that we've got really going on this week is the new moon in Leo. And I kind of look at this as a pretty chill week for the most part, but we start Monday off with the moon ingressing into Leo. And that's really kind of it. It's just the moon ingressing into Leo but the moon's gonna be in its dark phase now. We're really looking at this whole Leo part of our chart. So again, you wanna know what house Leo rules in your chart. This is so important because like, zodiac signs are archetypes. They are roles on a script, but the houses show you what area of your life that that archetype plays out in. So it's it's. I just feel like the houses, some people, when they get into astrology, like they get too confused about the houses. So they, you know, don't really think about it as much. But the houses are really important to understand, like where this stuff is affecting you in your life. We're having Venus retrograde here. We just had the Venus Kazemi here. Uh, the sun is in Leo. And so as the moon ingresses into Leo, we're really looking at the spot in our lives and asking like the deeper questions like, you know, I would love to sit here and talk about authenticity and, you know, love and not that those things aren't true, but it's just kind of like sometimes you don't need to necessarily think about like a specific topic. Like sometimes you just need to like sit with it. Like I think I don't remember if I was talking about this last week or the week before, but just kind of sitting in. Oh, on my Patreon, on the monthly rising sign horoscopes, I talked about I think it was either the Mercury Saturn opposition. I was I was talking about some harder transit and just kind of like, oh, Mars opposite Neptune. That happens actually next week. But I was talking about that as like, you're just not going to know things and you just kind of have to deal with it. Now, this isn't necessarily you don't know. This is much more of like, you're just going to sit with this energy. What has changed in this area for you? What is, you know, where can you feel more energized in this area? But this is a low energy point, right? This is the new moon. And Venus is still retrograding here. So it's just kind of like, you know, after the Venus Kazemi where there was this like full embodying of the changes that we're going through, this new moon is kind of like reflective of that. The way I like to look at it is, let's say you're, you, you know, you've done acid before or like you've had an ayahuasca trip. Like the Venus Kazemi is like, you're tripping, you have your spiritual breakthrough or whatever it is. And then the new moon is like reflecting on everything that you've learned and reflecting on what you went through and reflecting on what has changed and reflecting on what the new is going to be like. But again, this is very important to like what house Leo rules for you. And I'm, I know I'm kind of going off on a tangent here because literally just the moon enters Leo on Monday. So we don't even get the new moon to Wednesday. So let's go ahead and just move on. Well, let me also say this. The moon ingressing into Leo brings all of these themes up. And it will be a slow wind down into the new moon. But I think this reflection period starts with the, uh, with the moon ingressing into Leo on Monday morning. So then we get into Tuesday. And on Tuesday, the moon will then make a square to Jupiter and conjoin Venus. And as again, we're in this more reflective state, as we're in this more, you know, kind of just sitting with the energy, the moon making a square to Jupiter is, you know, Something that is challenging for me as an astrologer is when I do a weekly horoscope, I'm talking about the lunar transits most of the time. 
But the same lunar transits pretty much happen once every 30 days. So I've said a lot about the moon squaring Jupiter. And that's not to say like I shouldn't say anything more about it because everything changes, right? But dark moon, like the moon in Leo is typically like, you know, prideful emotions and very like, you know, our hearts are on our sleeves kind of. But this is that dark moon phase and it's squaring Jupiter. Now, something to understand is there's something in astrology called um, like a superior position. So, for example, if you pulled up a chart, which Parker, make the chart Leo rising. <laughs> I feel like Jarvis, Jarvis, make the chart Leo rising. Jupiter is at the top. It's at the 10th house while the moon and the sun are in the first house. So what we say is Jupiter's in the superior position here. So why I'm bringing up all of this is this is actually where I come from when it comes to delineating a, um, a transit. As I look at, you know, what is, what, is, what is the superior aspect here going on? Like, for example, is this just a Venus retrograde in Leo squaring Jupiter or Jupiter being at the superior position? Is this Venus retrograding like for Jupiter, if that makes sense, because of Jupiter? And so as the moon makes that square to Jupiter, this kind of, there's this kind of look at like Jupiter is, again, faith. Uh, you know, I've ta I talked about this like months ago when Jupiter first ingressed, but like Jupiter is such a funky planet. Jupiter on like base level astrology is like philosophy, hope, faith, abundance, um, spirituality, religion, um, but it also rules life and it rules death. It rules drunkenness and it rules sobriety. And the life and death part always catches my eye. I don't know what it is about that. Um, I mean, I have thoughts about it, but I'd have to really sit here and, and explain it to you guys, which we don't have the time today. But the reason I'm bringing this up is Jupiter's not yet at its stationing degree to go retrograde, but it will be going retrograde pretty soon. And I just think as the moon squares Jupiter, it, again, with Jupiter in the superior position, there's this like your, your like your pride or your ego and your heart wants more. But Jupiter and Taurus is asking you like, again, what do you really value? What is actually going to make you feel the best? What is sustainable? What is enriching? And Jupiter and Taurus is also like, you know, making, if Jupiter is about faith, right? And it's in the sign of like Venus, there's something about like peace here. There's something about just like relaxation, enjoyment. And I just look at this moon making the square to Jupiter as kind of like, I don't want to say a light bulb clicking, but going back to that ayahuasca analogy that I made, it's kind of like, if you're in resistance to spiritual or physical changes, you know, we fight. We want to push back against everything that's trying to make us change. And I just feel like this moon in Leo squaring Jupiter is just kind of like, yeah, this is different. It's not maybe what I wanted to do. Like, have you ever been in a situation where you knew you needed to make changes, but you resisted it? And then you finally just kind of humbled yourself and, you know, something, I'm going to give you guys a framework. And I want you to actually apply this in your life and think about it. Do you want to be right? Or do you want to be happy? A lot of you, this is me included because I'm a human being, we choose to be right rather than be happy. Like, for example, you know, I've talked a lot about the um, like the ADHD stuff. And there's kind of like this, oh, I have ADHD, so I can't X, Y, and Z. That makes you right. But do those limitations make you happy? Do putting those barriers or those stipulations on your abilities create any joy in your life? Um, and that's just one example. Like you could think of this, it, like for example, I, I've talked a lot about that. I've been doing YouTube for, gosh, I'm on, going on seven years now. And I, it took me like two or three years to like be like, oh, I should start doing thumbnails. And that's because I wanted to be right. Being like, oh, it didn't matter. Oh, I'm not going to pay attention to it. Like I'm just going to do my video and it'll be fine. Um, but then I realized I'm not getting the results that I want. And so maybe I'm wrong and I want to be happy and being happy meant getting the results. So now I make the stupid goofy faces. And honestly, I had so much resistance to making stupid thumbnails. And a lot of you talk shit about my thumbnails, which is, which is fine. I have so much more fun with my thumbnails now, like making stupid faces and just making like very epic clickable thumbnails is really fun. Um, as a content creator, I know sometimes it's cringy or very clickbaity, but like it's a lot of fun and it creates the result that I want. And I'd much rather be happy than be right. And so I just look at the moon squaring, Ju I'm going really off on this moon square Jupiter transit right now, but I look at the moon square Jupiter as just kind of like realizing like, hey, maybe I'm not right. Like maybe something has to change in order for me to create this happiness. And then the moon will conjoin Venus. 
And I think this is where we start to like emotionally embody like the, I have a, like, again, this is what I love about the Leo stuff is Leo's very authentic, right? Leo's very like, when you talk to the fixed signs, the fixed signs are always right. You know what I mean? Um, but especially Leo, right? Like I come off as very, you know, confident, but sometimes I'm also very arrogant and sometimes I'm very stubborn and hard headed, and the, I could only be right, right? That's one of my issues. But as the moon conjoins Venus, there's this level of like accepting that you can be happy and you can still be confident without necessarily being right. Like, for example, so many people are afraid to fail that they just don't even start anything. Like, especially with YouTube, like, this is, uh, if you, if you ever want to get into YouTube, I really recommend listening to the Mr. Beast Lex Friedman podcast and take every single word that Mr. Beast says as fact, as science, your first hundred videos are going to suck. No one's going to watch them and you're going to hate yourself. Like there's just no getting around it, but the only way to really fail is to not like continue. It's just to stop. And I just look at the moon conjoining Venus as just kind of like not being afraid to fail or not being afraid to admit that you were wrong or not being afraid to admit that you didn't see things clearly. And so, and again, we're, this is all coming into the new moon stuff. Now, the highlight that we have going on on Tuesday is the sun is going to make a square to Uranus. This is a little challenging. Um, I would say that this energy offers a breakthrough if you're interested in that. And I think that's just because of everything else that's going on. You know, the new moon. Um, all the moon, Jupiter, Venus stuff. But the sun squaring Uranus is like our will, our ego, our identity, our energy is being aspected by a planet that creates instability and that creates, you know, ups and downs, but also liberations and breakthroughs. But it's through a square. And the sun in Leo wants to be prideful. The sun in Leo wants to be right. The sun in Leo wants us to be confident and it'll create a worldview in which that's the truth. But I think as the sun squares Uranus, it's kind of like there will be kind of a zap. It's kind of like when you touch an electric fence. Like things will be shaky if you're just going to sit here and continue doing the same thing that you've always done. But if you're underneath this kind of acceptance, if you're underneath this kind of like surrendering to the process and you're just kind of like, I'd rather be happy than right. Um, that sun squaring Uranus, I think, really allows for like a personal breakthrough with like your own willpower, your own energy, your own, e even your ego, not letting yourself get in your own way. Um, things will be shaken up a little bit, but it's one of those things of the fixed signs just want to control everything. And with Uranus and Taurus, it's like what we want is stability and what we want is to, and what we, and the things that want to, that we want to ground us, there is no stability there. It's very shaky. It's all over the place. And the sun can either like resist that or the sun can utilize that as, um, a, uh, a benefit. For example, you know what I just saw the other day? I'm so glad I remembered this because I tell you guys all the time, your limitations, your bullshit, your excuses are, are no excuse because there's people that have it way worse than you doing the same thing. And you know what video I saw the other day? I saw a guy with no arms throwing Frisbee golf and he picked up the Frisbee with his toes, like leaned back with his leg and just flicked it. And it was beautiful. Like I was like, like it was a good throw. Um, I don't know if throw is the right word using a foot and a leg, but he's using his disability. If you even want to call it a disability to his advantage, like he's throwing with his legs. He's not letting that get in the way. And it's one of those things of like you make your weaknesses or make your, your pitfalls, like your strengths. And there's so many ways to do that. Like you can think of a lot of contemporary artists and musicians that do things like that. But that's how I look at the sun square Uranus. Then we get to Wednesday and the, and this is when we have the new moon in Leo. And I, again, this is kind of like post ayahuasca trip. And I'm just using this as an analogy, post ayahuasca, post mushrooms, whatever you want to do. Um, and you have that reflection period coming down and, and just kind of like reflecting on everything that you've learned and what's different. And this new moon is kind of like you're packing up everything and you're ready to go into what is new. You know, you're not exactly starting things yet. You're not exactly back at your home, you know, working, doing the same thing. But that new moon is kind of like, I'm ready to have a new start here. I'm ready to be someone else. I'm ready to live more authentically. And I, I, I even hate that I just said that. That's so cringe because I just think, and a lot of the self-help, personal development stuff, all of the very surface stuff, it's like, you got to live authentically. But it's just kind of like, half of you don't even know who you are. And I think a lot of, and that's not a diss at all. Like, that's just like, welcome to being a human being. 
But the other part of it is like, we haven't challenged our, like if you've never challenged yourself like fully and you just quit and gave up on everything, you have literally no idea who you are. The only way to know who you are is like pushing yourself beyond your limitations and your boundaries. That's how you find out who you are. But you don't find out who you are by reading some self-help book. You find out who you are by like challenging all your preconceived notions about what you're capable of doing, how the world works. Same thing with like wealth consciousness. Like this is what gets so frustrating with people around my age around wealth is they're just like, oh, I'm poor and you know, the, we need to tax more of the billionaires because that's going to somehow uh, help them in some capacity. Like you can change your whole worldview. You can change how you see everything. But the thing is, you have to push yourself. The thing is, you have to challenge your beliefs about something. And we live in a society in where, you know, everything is like catering to your worldview and not challenging that. So I think on the new moon, there's this level of, I, again, I don't want to just say living more authentically, like you got to challenge yourself to do that. But there is at least this hope and this ambition and this fire up your ass to where that can be more of a possibility. And then the moon ingresses into Virgo, where I like Wednesday for that. I love all this Virgo energy that we have going on, because I think as the moon goes into Virgo, it's like, all right, what's the plan? What are the details? What are we going to get organized? I'm going to go home. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I'm going to X, Y, and Z. But also the big highlight on Wednesday is Mars is going to try and Uranus. There is another level, another, there's a lot of Uranus transits happening lately, but there's another opportunity for some sort of a breakthrough or some sort of a innovation you know, Mars is in Virgo. We're getting into the nitty gritty of all the problems. Like Mars in Virgo isn't just like, again, it's like attacking your to-do list. But the other part of it is like, let's be surgical and detailed about what the problem is. It's kind of like, again, like if you're running like a business and you've got like inventory and there's some weird thing going on, like sometimes you have to get, or like if you have a website and your, your website's doing something funky, like sometimes you got to get into the code and be like, what the fuck is this code doing? That's like the Mar that's like Mars and Virgo, but Mars trying Uranus is finding some sort of a solution, finding some sort of like a, even just like, again, Mars trying Uranus is like, all right, cool. I'm going to go and do this. Cool. I'm going to go and do that. Cool. I'm excited. Or I like, have you ever had a problem that you avoided and you ignored because of the stress or like, you know, your own self-sabotaging negative beliefs about yourself getting your way? I feel like Mars and Virgo is trying Uranus is like when like the opposite happens. Have you ever like been like, you know what? I'm just going to handle this problem that I've had going on forever. But because for some reason you just have this weird spark of inspiration to take care of it. That's how I look at Mars trying Uranus on Wednesday. So then we get into Thursday, the moon will then go opposite Saturn and it will be applying to Jupiter through a trine for pretty much the whole day. Technically the moon isn't trying Jupiter till like 1 AM uh, Denver time uh, on, on Friday, but it'll be applying to Jupiter all day. The moon in Virgo, opposite Saturn in Pisces. Again, you don't know what you don't know. I think the moon opposite Saturn, again, our emotions, um, our body, our feelings are at complete odds with like where we need to be more mature, where we need to be more disciplined. It's kind of like, you know, I kind of look at moon opposite Saturn. It's, it's like you can't be a baby and throw a fit about stuff. Um, like you really can't. Um, what I what I, I have Saturn and Aries fallen. Like I have a lot of things to say about Saturn that I appreciate, but something I appreciate about Saturn and Pisces is there's no rule book to life. There's no, there's no one to tell you besides elders, besides like the people who have lived before you and you can learn from them. But with the moon and Virgo opposite Saturn and Pisces is like, you're going to have to figure this one out on your own. You know, there's no recipe that's going to work exactly for you. That's like, here's what you do after you have a trans a transformative life change. Um, here's exactly what you need to be doing as you, as the individual watching this, there is not, you have to do some trial and error. You have to do some troubleshooting. And I think the moon and Virgo opposite Saturn is like, you could sit there and be a baby all day long and be like, Oh, but I don't know what to do next. And now I have analysis paralysis and I overthink too much and I'm too stimulated, but you just kind of have to like, you know, like I, I've told people about this before, like same thing with the ADHD stuff is like, I can struggle with that. But like, I like as a grown, for one, for one as a grown fucking man, but, but two, I have goals and dreams and ambitions that aren't just going to come my way because I want them. Everyone wants the same, you know, this is something I like about Alex Ramosi. He said this one time. It's like, everyone has the same goals. 
but only a small portion of people achieve them. So you have to look at the people that actually achieve them to understand what it takes to do. We, we all want to be millionaires. We all want to be successful, right? But how many of you guys do the things that it takes to do that? And for me, it's been a lot of like, I've had to, and I don't like even saying overcome limitations, but I've had to discipline myself to say, hey, where am I getting in my own way? And what do, where do I need to grow up? Where do, I need, where do I need to mature? Where do I need to like handle this problem so I can move past it? And it's not easy, but it's rewarding. It's so rewarding. So I think the moon opposite Saturn, you're just going to have to like, it's going to be stressful because you're going to be like, oh, I want to know everything, but I don't know what to do next. Shut up. You're going to have to be serious about it. Just take it for what it is. And if that's too hardcore for you guys, there's a lot of other astrologers out there that will baby you into it. But for me, and the way I like to practice, because again, I don't think there's a point into watching astrology stuff uh, and you're just going to take it as a victimization of life and not being like, all right, what can I do about it? How can I change? How can I grow? You know, I've, I've been hearing a couple different opinions about the, the purpose of life. And like Alex Ramosi has a really good point that's very um, unorthodox, but he's like, there is no purpose. There's no meaning. Like stop associating meaning and purpose to life because then it becomes easier to do whatever you want. It becomes easier to accept things because like, if you're always looking for this meaning, if you're always looking for this purpose, you're going to like, like there's going to be this lack of something in your life. But the other thing that I've heard, um, I can't remember if this is Alex Ramosi or, uh, um, Bedros Koulian, um, I think it was Bedros, but he says like, actually, I think this is Alex. I gotta, I gotta remember, but one of them said the purpose of life is to fulfill potential. What, like, for example, you can have a tree that doesn't have any water or doesn't have any resources to do what it needs to do, but it's still going to grow. It's still going to do everything that it can. You know, think about a weed in the cement cracks. That weed has a potential to fulfill and it's not going to let the concrete jungle stop it from trying to grow. There might be a lot of harder limitations, but lo and behold, we've all seen a weed sprout out from the concrete or from the asphalt. Like this is why I like personal development is like there is this inner desire on all roots of life to fulfill a certain potential. And I just think when we watch astrology or when we practice astrology, if you're not interested in fulfilling that potential, you're not interested in living life. And it becomes easier to use astrology as a tool for just beating yourself up or playing victim. So the moon goes opposite Saturn. The moon will then shrine Jupiter. Again, Jupiter's in Taurus. All of these good things are going to take time. They're going to take consistency. They're going to take also like being grounded in it, not just like like Jupiter and Aries is very like, I'm going to fight the fight and we're going to be ambitious. Jupiter and Taurus is like, hey, like slow and steady wins the race. And I think as the moon separates from Saturn and applies to Jupiter through that trine, there's a level of like, okay, you're not going to get it figured out. You're not going to just fix your whole world in one afternoon. You are going to though, like if you take these baby steps, if you just do one thing at a time, it's just like a staircase. All life is a staircase. You just take one step at a time and eventually you reach the top. So just taking one step at a time and knowing it's a big staircase, it's going to take some time and you might be tired, but you will eventually get to the top if you take that step. Then we get to Friday and on Friday, the moon will then conjoin Mercury and Mars in between the moon Mars uh, conjunction. It will try Uranus. And then after all that, it'll go opposite Neptune. So Friday's very productive moon conjoining Mercury and Mars. Here's the issue though, is Mercury's getting ready to go retrograde. Like Mercury's pretty much stationing at this point. You got to refix your game plan. Like you've got to refix your logistics. Like I said, I've said this with the Mercury retrograde in Virgo. It's like, hey, like again, your your sales went up five hundred percent, but you don't got the inventory, you don't got the supply chain, you don't got the logistics to meet, you don't got the people that can fulfill those orders. It is going to take some changes. You got all of these things that you want to do in your life, and you've got the mentality, but you realize I need to like for example, I'm so shout out to Parker right now, but I'm so grateful for Parker because like I did not want to hire someone. I did not, but I knew I needed to, but I was like, but it's going to cost money. And I, all my negative wealth, wealth beliefs came up and lo and behold, I just took a chance and I was like, you know what? I know I need to do this and I'll figure out a way to pay for it. You know, I, I make enough money to do it, but like, you know, when you first hire someone, there's a lot of fear around it. Like it's, it's a big task to like, you know, make sure that you can pay someone and the benefits of it. Oh my God, does Parker do all my work for me? Um, and it seems like a very, you know, like she's getting out a lot of it. I'm getting out a, a lot out of it. And I just think with the moon, uh, again, with the moon conjoining Mercury, Mars and Virgo, it's like, we have all these plans and systems, but we have to change something on the back end with it. 
And again, maybe that looks like help. But again, how can we expand? How can we, you know, change things up? For example, like my workflow is completely different now that I have Parker, but it's more efficient. It's more detailed. There's much more added value to it. And it's easier for me. That's how I look at the moon conjoining Mercury and Mars is just kind of like, we need to detail all these plans, but as Mercury's about to retrograde, we know something's got to change. Something's got, we, we got to switch things up. And it's not a bad Mercury retrograde. Do not sit here and tell me it's a bad Mer Mercury retrograde. The moon will try and Uranus in between. So there is some sort of an innovation and a breakthrough. But then by the end of Friday, the moon's going to go opposite Neptune. And there's like, <laughs> like, well, for example, I'll just use my Parker analogy. It's just like, I don't know what the result is like we've been working together for four or five months and i didn't see all of the best results and it did take some time to like you know get a flow going but then it was like you know we did my saturn and pisces video that blew up a lot of you guys followed me from that my channel's been doing so much better and it's just kind of like you don't know what you don't know like you could change all of these things and you could sit here and toil in the unknown or you can just be like well i don't know what that's going to look like so why sit here and worry about it then, then once we get to Saturday, the moon ingresses into Libra, and that's it. Like, the moon's not doing much on Saturday. So I think Saturday is much more of, like, chill, relaxing, hanging out, maybe connecting more with people, you know, getting, you know, things in order, like catching up on emails, taking care of this, taking care of that, getting everything in balance, right? Like, if your work life is too extreme, like, time to maybe focus a little bit more on that home life. If you're, again, like, you're super focused on yourself, maybe focus on the relationships. Like, that. that's kind of like the moon and Libra hanging out here. But then once we get to Sunday, the moon is going to make a sextile to Venus. And what I like about this is, again, Venus is still retrograde, but now she's coming into Morningstar, and she's getting closer and closer to Jupiter, and we're almost done with the Venus retrograde. The moon will make the sextile to Venus where... If we need to, if we're undergoing this value shift, right? If we're undergoing this different way that we see the world and ourselves, the moon and Libra sextiling Venus, like number one, the moon and Libra is always going to involve like a relationship, like some individual, like that doesn't mean romantic. It could, but some other individual sextiling Venus retrograde is like, who are the people around you or who is around you that can offer insight as to like, for one, it's kind of like one of those days where like, again, someone might be like, Hey, you're making this change or you're doing this different. And you know, we recognize it. But the moon sextiling Venus is kind of like your order of operations or the – if we're undergoing this kind of like value shift again with how we see ourselves, it's kind of like, well, who are the people that we're with? What do we need to rebalance and what do we need to reconfigure? I think what's more important is the moon is getting closer and closer to the south node. So there has to be some relationship changes. There has to be this kind of like, hey – you know, you can't be everyone for, you can't be everything for everyone. You do have to kind of make some adjustment adjustments here. But I think Venus sextiling, I mean, the moon sextiling Venus is kind of realizing, hey, I value this now and I enjoy this. But then once we get to Monday next week, it's going to be like, but that means I have to let go of this, right? There's trade-offs to everything. That's what I love about the moon and Libra. It's very trade-offs or just trade-offs in general for the sign of Libra. But we get to next week. Next week has a lot going on. Venus is going to square Jupiter. That's a really, really big deal because that's pretty much, we're getting ready for Venus stationing direct. The sun will ingress into Virgo. Mercury stations retrograde next week. Time to change all of our plans. Mars will go opposite Neptune. We don't know what the great unknown looks like. We don't know what's next for us, but we know something's got to change. And then Mars enters Libra. Mars entering Libra is going to be tough. Uh, Mars entering Libra is going to, it's going to be a tough couple weeks with Mars entering Libra because that's also going to, get us into eclipse season. So with that being said, I'll leave you guys off with that. I love and appreciate you guys and I'll be seeing you next week.